turbine, what is surge tank, what is cavitation, and how do we select these turbines, etc. We try to see in in today's uh, module. So we have been using a pensac. What is this pensac? It is a conduit or a pipe which is connecting a reservoir to the turbine. housed in a powerhouse building for power generation so turbine is there in a powerhouse and this turbine requires water for its uh, moving for its rotation but where is the water available the water is available in the reservoir so the water which is available in the reservoir will be conveyed carried by means of this large diameter pipe known as penistar which will supply the water directly to the entrance of the turbine runner so this penistar is a very important component for the hydro, hydro power projects the design of penistar etc is a, a very big important topic because the penistar pipe carries water under pressure so if the pressure is more penistar bursts penistar bursts so you need to be very careful while taking up the design so it withstands the hydraulic pressure of water under static condition as well as under dynamic condition it contains the closing devices like gates walls at the starting and just after the reservoir and at the tail end just before the turbine to control the flow in the penistar so penistar should carry the water but it should supply the water to the turbine as and when required if the water is not required it should not be supplied if the water is required it should be able to supply more water so the penistar material may be a mild steel or glass reinforced plastic grp reinforced cement concrete wood staves sometimes or even cast iron also may be used sometimes hdp also may be used depending on Uh, the suitability at the site condition. These are all the material with which a penistar may be prepared. The penistar cost contribute an appreciable percentage towards the total civil works cost of the hydroelectric project. So, if you take a hydroelectric project, so the cost may be divided for several things like uh, what is the total uh, cost required for the construction of a dam and farming area? What is the co total cost required for um, designing and installation? of a hydroelectric power station like turbine and then uh, generator etc transmission other important part is connecting these two connecting these two so penistar so what is the cost of the penistar penistar and what is the cost of the penistar and other related expenditure involved that contributes a, a sizable amount in the total cost of the hydroelectric project world records in penistar design both With regard to the maximum design and maximum internal diameter, also maximum design head is about fifteen hundred meters. Penistar's may be designed to carry the water with a head of fifteen hundred meters. Similarly, what is internal diameter of a penistar pipe? Thirteen point two six meters. Hardly three to three hundred meters will be height of one building. Thirty meters is height of four buildings. Such a huge height may be there. I mean, the diameter may be there, and the size may be there for the canister to carry the water. Besides, the hydraulic optimization of water conduits, the choice of suitable materials, along with the most economic process of technology, is a major concern in the construction and the execution of the penistars. You can see here a pictorial representation of a penistar, which is connecting to the reservoir and carrying the water. Maybe need not be aligned in the same line. It may be aligned even with with the band also. Okay, and finally it is joining to the hydroelectric power station. So on the right hand side you have the hydroelectric power station. On the left hand side you have a dam and a reservoir. And the conveying part, the connecting part between the dam and from the reservoir the water to the entrance of the turbine runner is through this penstock. This is the penstock portion. So that is how the cost of the penstock also. Uh, would be appreciable as compared to the cost, the total cost of the project, total cost of the project. So, in construction, if you see a pictorial representation of the penistar is shown here. So, sometimes like you know, something like a big tube or a pipe which is required, so which is required to be connected in the form of the rings, may be bolted, may be welded, and so on can be taken up. Okay. So, this is how another picture which is showing you the water being carried, conveyed to the turbine. Entrance, the turbine entrance. So this is all the penistar, and this is the tail race. Next one is cavitation in turbine. Another topic is cavitation in turbine. So where where does this cavitation occur? Whether this is a desirable phenomena, 
if it is not a desirable phenomena what measures are to be taken to to see that the cavitation is eliminated in the turbines the cavitation is eliminated in the turbines when the pressure in any part of the turbine falls below the vapor pressure the liquid starts vaporizing and large amount of small bubbles of the vapor will be formed why this will happen this will happen because because of the fluid property vapor pressure because of the fluid property vapor pressure so for a flowing fluid at any section if the pressure is dropping below the vapor pressure naturally there will be vaporization vaporization means vapor packets will be formed bubbles will be formed so these vapor packets will be carried will be carried along with the flow of water when they reach high pressure zone they collapse when they reach the high pressure zones they collapse so the water is under flow condition maybe in the penstock or maybe in the turbine portion all through the turbine casing the water is in flowing condition so at the, at the regions where the vapor the pressure drops below vapor pressure naturally there will be vaporization taking place because of this vaporization vapor pockets will be formed these packets or bubbles will be carried along with the flow of water when they reach the zones of high pressure these vapor packets will collapse this results in the formation of a cavity and the surrounding liquid rushes to fill it up because because the bubble is collapsing the bubble initially nothing will be there no so all through it is surrounded by the liquid the liquid which is available surrounding this bubble or vapor packet will have a tendency to rush and fill that so the liquid coming from all the directions collide at the center giving rise to a very high local pressure so formation of cavity and high pressure are repeated many times a second in one second several times there will be high pressure and then collapse of these packets and these packets are collapsed vacuum is created so the surrounding liquid tries to rush in to join to that portion leading to the abnormal pressure development high local pressure would be developed at that particular portion so this causes pitting on the metallic surface of the runner blades also sometimes on the draft tube also so what will happen there the material may get eroded of the surface of the blades the material may get eroded or in the draft tube also the material may get eroded so the the material then falls by fatigue so this phenomenon of pitting of metallic surfaces is called cavitation cavitation is a phenomenon in which the metallic surface gets pitted off due to the high vapor pressure and high pressures high local pressures which are developed because of the carrying of the bubbles carrying of the vapor packets so as can be seen when the material is getting eaten away when the material is getting eaten away by the draft tube or by the runner blades naturally it is not a desirable phenomenon because the efficiency of the turbine goes down so the turbine components should be so designed that as far as possible this cavitation must be eliminated as far as possible the cavitation must be eliminated so the negative pressure at any point in a turbine should not exceed the limiting pressure the negative pressure head hn should be equal to the atmospheric pressure head minus the vapor pressure head atmospheric pressure head minus vapor pressure head so when the negative pressure exceeds the limit cavitation occurs so all the time we have to design in such a way that the negative pressure should not exceed the limiting pressure given by this equation atmospheric pressure head 10.32 meters of water minus vapor pressure head and whatever is the pressure no so this negative pressure head should not exceed that thoma suggested a cavitation factor sigma this cavitation factor is sigma to determine the zone where the turbine can work without being affected by the cavitation so the critical value of this cavitation factor sigma is given to be critical cavitation parameter sigma c the critical value is sigma c so sigma c is given by ha minus hv minus hs whole divided by h whole divided by h ha is the atmospheric pressure head hb hb is the barometer pressure which may be hb minus ha minus hb and hs is the suction head and h is the total head the total head or the net head of the turbine so the critical cavitation number depends upon the type of the turbine and is a, a function of the specific speed also okay so this is about the cavitation as far as possible cavitation 
should not occur cavitation should be eliminated the turbines must be so designed that it is not affected by the cavitation so what is this cavitation cavitation is a phenomenon which is not desirable which happens due to the vapor pressure the fluid property vapor pressure when the liquid is in motion in flowing condition when this liquid reaches a low pressure region when the pressure at that particular section is dropping below the vapor pressure of the liquid packets will be formed vapor bubbles will be formed these vapor bubbles are carried along with the flow and when they reach the high pressure region the bubbles collapse because of this sudden collapse of the bubble the surrounding liquid tries to push in and join and occupy that space leading to the abnormal local pressure development as a result of which the material of the draft tube or the material of the turbine blades will be eaten away pitting takes place this phenomenon is called cavitation cavitation is not a desirable phenomenon we don't want this because the efficiency of the turbine comes down thoma has given a parameter known as the critical cavitation parameter sigma c given by the expression like hb the parameter pressure minus the suction pressure suction pressure at hs divided by h if this is satisfied then cavitation will not occur for the turbine all the next is governing of turbine what do you mean by this governing of turbine and how this governing operation takes place so to understand about this governing you need to uh, look back once again to the components of our hydraulic turbines we have, we have seen that there are two major components in a hydro i mean hydraulic turbine or hydroelectric power station uh, saying that deflector is one item that i i told you and explained to you and the other is the hydraulic brick so these are the two items which are kept there in hydroelectric power station just to repeat when the water is flowing through the penstock pipe suddenly if the demand the power demand the load on the turbine is reduced water is no longer required to be supplied water is no longer required to be supplied the turbine runner must be stopped if the turbine runner is stopped the rotation of the turbine runner stops if there is no rotation generator also stops power will not be generated because we don't require power if we don't require power you should stop running the hydraulic turbine how to stop running the hydraulic turbine there is initial inertia for this turbine because water is already flowing in the uh, penstock pipe and it is continuously striking the blades of the turbine runner and the turbine runner is rotating so due to inertia it continues to rotate even after the water supply is cut off to avoid that we provide a hydraulic brake which supplies water to see that the turbine is rotating in the opposite direction the tendency of this hydraulic brake is the jet of water which is coming out from the hydraulic brake strikes the turbine and blades in order to see that the turbine is brought to the standstill position at a faster time similarly a deflector is provided at the penstock end to see that as and when water is not required the deflector deflect the water without striking the turbine runner without striking the turbine runner in fact you can close the valve also if you close the valve water will not come out from the penstock but there is a problem if you start closing the valve all of a sudden all the amount of water which is flowing will have both dynamic i mean hydraulic energy as well as pressure energy so if the if the flowing water is brought to rest all of a sudden all the kinetic energy would be converted into pressure energy so this pressure energy of the flowing fluid plus the converted pressure energy huge pressure will be developed in the penstock this will lead to failure of the penstocks bursting of penstocks also will take place so to avoid all that there will be deflector as and when there is no power demand the water must be deflected without striking the blades of the turbine runner okay so all this operation how it will be taken up this will be taken up in a completely automated fashion by means of a device known as governor by device known as governor so governing of the turbine means it is to see that the turbines are maintained constant speed all through irrespective of having the load variation demand is becoming more the demand is becoming less whatever happens it has to run at the constant speed and this process is taken up automatically by means of this governing of turbines all the modern hydraulic turbines are required to are directly coupled to the electric generator we have seen there is a shaft one end there will be 
uh, hydraulic turbine runner and the other end there will be a generator let it be a horizontal shaft turbine let it be a vertical shaft turbine but the procedure is same so you have generator connected to the shaft on one side runner connected to the shaft on the other side since the runner is rotating shaft also rotates making the generator to rotate these generators are required always to run at a constant speed irrespective of the variation in the load whether the demand is increasing or the, the demand is decreasing but they are required to run at the constant speed maybe like n is equal to 60 f by p with the number of pairs of poles and the frequency of the power generation in circuits per second the load on the generator will go on varying and if the input for the turbine remains the same the speed will increase or the speed may decrease depending on the load on the generator if the load is increasing the speed will increase to meet the higher power demand but which is not a desirable phenomena the speed should not increase or decrease it is required to run at constant speed so this causes the speed of the generator also vary accordingly which is not desirable as such the speed of the turbine runner is required to be maintained constant so that the generator always runs at constant speed under all conditions of working high load no load normal load whatever may be the loading condition there it is required to run at a constant speed this is usually done by regulating the quantity of water flowing through the runner such an operation of regulation of the speed is known as governing all this is done automatically by means of a device known as governor one such governor is oil pressure governor oil pressure governor is one such governor which may be used for operating or governing the pelton wheel so water turbines are called upon to work at various outputs and the outputs keep on varying with time speed also is affected when the output is varying however turbines coupled to the generators have to work at constant speed and that's how we are using the governor governors are used in connection with the diesel engine steam turbine or steam engines also in case of water turbine the governor maintains the required speed by controlling the input as well as the quantity of water as well as the quantity of water so this special requirement makes the governor for water water turbine heavy and massive requiring the use of oil pressure governors so you see the schematic representation of the oil pressure governor is shown here and the entire thing is taken up in a fully automated way in a fully automated way wherein you have a simple simple harmonic motion which is provided to the deflector so this deflector is connected to a spear and a spear rod so you can just see this portion you can see this portion so this is all the nozzle so this is all the nozzle so in this nozzle the water may be coming out from the nozzle with high kinetic energy and striking the buckets of blades of the runner so within this nozzle there is a spear provided the spear is connected to a spear rod this spear rod in turn is connected to a servo motor mechanism moving with a simple harmonic motion more power demand is there more water is required more discharge is required to have more discharge more cross section area flow must be made available so to have more cross section area for flow the spear rod is required to be pulled out so this will be taken up with the help of a, a spear rod connected here and this plunger moves with a simple harmonic motion and the spear rod comes out cross section area increases since the cross section area is increases discharge increases more water comes out more water strikes the buckets more power will be generated more power will be generated without changing the speed on the other hand the second category you know you don't require power power demand is reduced power demand is reduced less power is required to be developed so to develop less power let less discharge must be supplied q is the p is directly proportional to q into h so if p is more q is required to be more if p is less q is required to be less so to have lesser discharge to have lesser discharge less cross section area must be made available to have less cross section area the plunger, the plunger here pushes the spear rod there by the spear moves towards the opening and closes the opening if the opening is closed to the maximum there with the help of the spear the cross section area available for flow will be reduced 
if area available for flow is reduced area into velocity gives the discharge so discharge also will be reduced less discharge results in less power all this arrangement is done by means of the servo motor mechanism which is connected in a governor okay so oil pressure governor is used in uh, hydraulic turbine similarly for, i mean in pelton wheel similarly for the reaction turbines other types of uh, pressure governors will be there the requirements for the governor are to control the speed of the turbine and the alternator system so as to be equal to synchronous speed the speed of the generator then to regulate the load that means the demand of the power can be regulated to help in starting and stopping the turbine by operating the needle valve in case of pelton wheel and guide vanes in case of reaction turbines the first two methods are adapted for the small units and for large units hydraulic oil pressure systems are invariably adapted okay so that is all about the governing of the turbines the next topic is about the surge tank you must have heard of a surge tank but why this surge tank is required to be provided if it is not provided in a hydroelectric power station what is the problem what is the ill effect of not providing a surge tank what is this surge tank surge tank is a storage reservoir it is a storage reservoir fitted on a penstock so surge tank is provided at the penstock to relieve the pipeline from the excessive pressure why this excessive pressure will be there because of the effect of this water hammer and thus to save the penstock by allowing the large portion of water into waste which otherwise would have been bursted the pipeline so when you have higher pressures the pipeline would burst the pipeline would burst so this is how a schematic representation of the surge tank where this such where is the surge tank provided the surge tank is provided before the turbine enters on the penstock pipe it is provided before the turbine enters on the penstock pipe okay so this is a penstock pipe and a surge tank is provided i just repeat the definition again a surge tank is a storage reservoir which is fitted on a penstock pipe so this is this is the surge tank which is a storage reservoir which is fitted on a penstock pipe further to relieve the pipeline from the excessive pressures due to water hammer if there is any excessive pressure in the water which is flowing in the penstock since it is connected to a surge tank this excessive pressure water enters into this surge tank if this enters into the surge tank water level in the surge tank rises okay so corresponding to the excessive pressure in the pipeline in the penstock pipe the water enters into the surge tank thereby the pressure within the penstock would be normal if the pressure within the penstock is normal it is safe it can be designed safe otherwise more pressure is there entire penstock pipe is to be designed to withstand for such higher pressures it becomes very anachronical it becomes very anachronical big thick pipe is to be provided naturally it becomes anachronical okay so this is the location of the surge tank okay uh, maybe maybe connected in front of a turbine runner and which is directly provided at the penstock okay so this is the surge tank when the load on the turbine falls it is performs two important functions the surge tank uh, performs two important functions when the load on the turbine falls suddenly governor operates reduces the supply of water into the runner this is what we have seen in the governing mechanism also however the water is already in the way of the turbine and this water is not recovered by the turbine then it enters into the surge tank so what is happening here the water is already flowing in the pipeline the water is flowing already flowing in the penstock you don't require power to be developed from this turbine there is no demand there is no demand what is required to be done now the supply is to be cut off supply of water into the penstock is to be cut off so to cut off this supply probably you may you may have a valve here close this valve if you close this valve what happens to the water which is already entered into the penstock the water which is which is already entered into the penstock possesses both pressure energy as well as the kinetic energy when you when you close this flow of water by means of a valve here then 
the kinetic energy of the flowing water gets converted into pressure energy because you are closing the motion of water movement of water is closed kinetic energy is reduced the velocity is brought down to zero if the velocity is brought down to zero kinetic energy is, is zero correspondingly the pressure energy must have increased so already the water flowing in the penstock is having certain pressure energy because of this the pressure energy is further increased which may lead to the failure of the penstock pipe bursting of the pipe so to avoid this if you provide the surge tank what will happen the water which is with excessive pressure enters into this surge tank it gets stored there it gets stored there there may be a case where the load on the turbine increases suddenly the other case here the, the the demand of power is increased suddenly by the turbine so immediately the turbine has to develop huge amount of power how to supply huge amount of power there unless there is water so the water is in the reservoir so if, if the water has to move from the reservoir through this penstock reach to the turbine entrance it takes substantial time it takes substantial time so the water which is already available in the surge tank enters into this penstock by because it is very nearby it is nearer to the turbine so the, the water which is already available in the surge tank initially meets the requirement of the power demand here by increasing the discharge in the meantime the water from the reservoir enters into the penstock and reaches the turbine and the higher power demand would be met so this surge tank performs two functions one is when there is no power demand the water i mean the pipeline will be relieved of the excessive pressure by diverting this water into the surge tank secondly when the load on the turbine increases to have more power then the water which is already available in the reservoir reaches through this penstock and to reach this water substantial time will be taken and hence initial water requirement will be met from this surge tank and in the meantime the water from the reservoir reaches the turbine so these are the two functions of the surge tank when the turbine when the, the load on the turbine falls suddenly then the water enters the surge tank when the load increases then the water from the surge tank reaches to the turbine by providing this surge tank near the turbine sudden increase in the demand of water can be met and in the meantime the water reaches from the head race through the penstock so by providing the surge tank the pipeline between the surge tank and the turbine should be strong enough to resist the water hammer effect while the remaining length of the pipe may be kept ordinary it, it saves a lot of cost it saves a lot of cost so there are two functions of the surge tank to save the pipeline from the bursting due to water hammer effect and to supply the water initially when the load increases to meet the initial demand okay so this is all about uh, the water hammer effect followed by the functions of the surge tank then selection of turbine how do you select a turbine so many turbines we have discussed so many features are there each turbine is having its own speciality its own speciality so which turbine to select when and where while selecting a hydraulic turbine following factors must be considered specific speed head overall cost of the turbine overall cost of the project path load operation that means how much efficient the turbine is when the turbine is required to run not at full load only at part load then disposition of the shaft rotational speed availability of water type of water all these are the parameters based on which a particular turbine can be selected for a given location specific speed each type of turbine has a different range of values of the specific speed which is almost which is most suitable for selecting a turbine for example you have a specific speed between 10 to 40 for a given hydroelectric turbine you have 10 to 40 is a specific speed then single jet pelton wheel is suitable if the value is between 40 to 70 multiple jet pelton wheel may be chosen if the value is between 70 to 116 a francis turbine with slow speed may be preferable between 116 to 231 you may how a normal speed francis turbine may be suitable between 230 to 340 fast francis turbine is suitable kaplan and propeller turbines are used where you have the specific speed value 
about 342 about 1160 and so on as far as possible a turbine with the highest permeable specific speed must be used second parameter based on which the turbine may be selected is type of i mean head of water the type of turbine also depends on head of water uh, we already classified like pelton wheel high head turbine transit turbine medium head turbine kaplan turbine low head turbine like this depending on the head ranges you may have different uh, turbines can be selected the third parameter is overall cost so whenever there is a hydroelectric uh, project we would like to see that the overall cost of the project should be as minimal as possible as much as possible so this overall cost consists of two things initial cost maintenance or running cost what is called running cost it may be something like maintenance or repair or operation all this would be the running cost so initial cost means what is the cost of installation and what you need to purchase and after purchasing what is the cost of installation is the initial cost we see that the overall cost as far as possible both together should be minimal because some of the turbine initial cost is very less but running cost is so high running cost is recursive cost every year you have to spend on that every year you have to spend on that so if you take uh, the life span of about 30 years 40 years the running cost along with the initial cost becomes too high though the initial cost is less initial cost is less so you need to see that the overall cost must be minimum possible next parameter is part load operation the load for which the turbine is designed is called full load design load or full load at this load efficiency is not maximum the turbines will not run at its full load all the time because full load sometimes may not, may not be providing the maximum efficiency like may not be providing the maximum efficiency so when the load is less than the normal load then the turbine is said to be working at a part load at this load the overall efficiency may become less than the maximum value so we have to choose a turbine to see that even at part load also it should be able to provide the highest or maximum possible overall efficiency next is disposition of the turbine shaft the turbine shaft can be a vertical shaft turbine or a horizontal shaft turbine as we have seen in the classifications also a vertical shaft turbine requires a deeper foundation generally adapted for reaction turbines whereas a horizontal shaft turbine require more area and uh, suitable for impulse turbines if you would like to choose maybe a pelton wheel or a bankish turbine or a gira turbine like impulse type and you have huge space available better to go for a horizontal shaft otherwise vertical shaft but that the, the disadvantage with the vertical shaft turbine is you need to have a lot of excavation required to be made particularly in the rocky foundation it is very costly then about the availability of water if the water available is less in quantity and the head is more then impulse turbines are suitable like pelton wheel you see the discharge requirement is very small because water is coming out only through a nozzle striking the buckets with high velocity velocity energy okay but whereas whereas the head requirement is high the turbine works of the order of more than 250 meters or so 200 250 meters 1500 meters just now we have seen high head would be there so availability of water versus head is very important you may have less discharge available but huge head may be available on the other side you may have huge quantity of water available at lesser discharge so we should opt appropriate turbine based on these conditions if the water available is less head is high impulse turbine like pelton wheel is suitable if more water at high head is available then you can go for uh, impulse turbine which can be uh, installed number of impulse turbines can be installed and if medium quantity of water is available at medium head transit turbine may be preferred if if you have huge quantity of water with lesser head kaplan turbine or propeller turbine is suitable next is the type of water if water to be used as a large amount of dirt and sand francis turbine cannot be used because its runner cannot withstand the erosion caused by the water so francis turbine is, is suitable for a qual pure quality water having no dirt no sand and so on so quality of water also is very very important it should be something like potable water should be there then any type of turbine can be chosen okay so this is how the turbines can be selected so selection of turbine surge tank 
penstock and then what more you have seen cavitation is the phenomena that also has been discussed okay so this finishes the hydraulic 